For the latest on the status of the investigation, let's turn now to NBC's justice correspondent, Pete Williams. Pete, good morning. Good morning to you, Katie. Here's what we think is the latest information we have from federal officials. Number one, they now think that there were probably 18 hijackers on board those four separate planes. In some planes, probably only two or three. In another plane, as many as five. Uh, they had said yesterday it might be between 12 and 24. Now they think it's about 18. That number may change. And they have all of those names. So of the hijackers that they know, they, they believe were on those planes, they know all of their names. As a matter of fact, they may publicly release those names later today. That's a possibility. Secondly, uh, the working assumption of the uh, federal officials on this investigation is that the planning for this attack has certainly been going on at least a year, and one official says an educated guess may be as many as two years. Now, a uh, couple of things. Uh, there are many, many leads, 2,000 uh, solid leads they're looking up. One official says over 20,000 tips to that uh, brand new uh, system the FBI set up for receiving tips, its website at uh, www.ifccfbi.gov, uh, www uh, 20,000 hits to that. Now, some of these turn out to be very solid, some not. Some arouse a lot of public attention, like the uh, yesterday's very high-profile search of uh, an apartment or a hotel room in uh, Boston, the Weston Hotel in Copley Plaza. That turned out to be nothing. Another one that's attracted a lot of attention is a report of a possible fifth plane. Here's where that report comes from. On Tuesday morning, the morning of the terrorist attacks, at about the same time as the other planes were taking off, uh, there was a complaint at JFK in New York that three Middle Eastern men were in some kind of an argument with a ticket agent. That they got on the plane, that the airline called Port Authority Police, and by the time the Port Authority Police showed up, the men were nowhere to be seen. They'd left the scene. So. That aroused a lot of suspicion that perhaps that was a potential fifth plane. However, a senior federal official tells NBC News that there's nothing credible to indicate that that was, in fact, a fifth plane. There's nothing to connect that to the uh, terrorist attacks. And in fact, this official says there are many well-meaning reports like that out there that officials have to check out, but that are turning out to be a wash. A mm -hmm. similar wash was a report yesterday in uh, Pennsylvania of a, of a uh, apartment landlord who said he thought there was suspicious, uh, someone acting suspiciously, found in their room a suspicious powder and perhaps technical training manuals for aircraft. That also turned out to be a wash. So many solid avenues that are being considered and being pursued, but some as well that are not panning out, Katie. Yeah, that's right, Pete, because I think earlier yesterday we were heard, hearing some speculation. There were a couple of people arrested on the GW Bridge with, a, with explosives, either in a car or truck. And again, we've heard no information about that. So inevitably, stories uh, start to surface. Right. Right, when something that, like this happens, yes. although uh, we're going to look more into that JFK flight a little bit more, Pete, because there are some very peculiar circumstances surrounding that. And I don't believe that flight ever took off. But as I said, we're going to look into that some more. Let me ask you, Pete, a little bit about these 18 hijackers. Do, do federal authorities know much about any of them? They do. They have learned about two of them, right? Or at least one of them? Well, they know well, they know quite a bit about uh, two of them. The mo uh, they may know more about others that we just haven't heard about yet, but they certainly know quite a bit about the two because what the sequence of events here is the passenger manifest list from one of the flights that left Boston leads them, uh, along with a report from a passenger uh, who just happened to get in an argument, apparently, with one of the drivers when they parked their car at Logan Airport. That led authorities to that car. The car registration, in turn, and some additional documents found in the car lead them to the Venice, Florida Flight School, where two men who've been publicly named, their picture has been uh, now publicly shown, uh, those two were known to have entered the United States sometime in the past year, have taken flight training in Venice, Florida for at least a year. They told the flight instructors that they had just come from uh, Hamburg, Germany, and interestingly enough, German authorities in Hamburg today detained someone in connection with this case, and they also gave their passports. So uh, a large number of uh, documentary uh, leads that the FBI can follow. They also used cash and credit cards to buy tickets and rent cars and hotel rooms. So, you know, this was a very well-planned attack in terms of the fact that it, no one seemed to know about it. It was carried off apparently by design. 
but they left a, a huge trail of clues behind them, lots of documentary evidence. They weren't trying very hard to cover their tracks, apparently. Yeah, I thought one that was, thing, oh, Katie, I'm sorry, go ahead, at, Pete. Sure. Okay, one other thing, at least a couple of these hijackers show up on an FBI database. Once the FBI got the names of the suspected hijackers, they entered them into their enormous database and did get what they call some hits, indicating that uh, some of these names were at least suspected of being associated with terrorist groups. Now, that doesn't mean that they were terrorists or that they had committed any crimes. There's nothing to prevent someone who's on the FBI database from ever getting on an airplane. There was nothing that would have stopped them from boarding their plane. It's not a federal crime to be on the FBI's database list. So there were a few people in that category as well. Pete, can you tell me anything more about uh, this? Well, first of all, what I was interrupting you to say, and I'm sorry about that, was it's really pretty amazing what an extensive paper trail at least these two men who were on the manifest uh, left as they went about their business here in the states. Well, it really is because uh, if you look, for example, just at the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, Timothy McVeigh went to great lengths to try to cover his tracks uh, for the most part, used an alias, uh, used a prepaid calling card so that there wouldn't be any kind of telephone records. Uh, these folks apparently did none of that, used credit cards in their own names rented ca cars in their own names. You know, it's just the same kind of thing that happened in the first World Trade Center bombing. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the bomb plotters uh, also rented, uh, you know, filled out the rental application for the truck in their own names. So, you know, many aspects of highly detailed planning, but then obviously very sloppy things as well, leading some to speculate that perhaps that they wanted to be known after this had happened. Another thing that's very unusual about this case, just to state the obvious, Normally, when you have a terrorist attack, the terrorists themselves uh, flee. Here, the, the chief terrorists, of course, were killed along with everyone else. That makes uh, part of the investigation a little difficult, too, because you have the names on the flight list. But then how do you confirm that those people were actually on board those planes, other than simply the fact that they were on the manifest list? Now, that's pretty good proof, right. but it was, it's going to be virtually impossible to prove that they were really on those planes. And Pete, can you tell us any more or shed any more light on the, the, the individual who's been detained in Hamburg and, and why and what connection that person might have? Well, the uh, German authorities aren't saying much, uh, other than the fact that this person apparently worked at an airport. Uh, it's my guess, this is just a guess, that knowing how uh, federal law enforcement agencies work, that they probably asked for German cooperation in finding this person because of the Hamburg connection to those uh, two suspected terrorists who took their flight training at the uh, uh, pilot training center school in, in Venice. Florida. They told authorities there that they had come most recently from Hamburg, Germany, uh, and in fact there's some indication that they did live there. Mm -hmm. So perhaps this is a person who was known to them there. I wanted to mention another interesting development too, Pete, that Chris Hansen mentioned earlier is that a ramp pass was found inside that car that they searched at Logan Airport, which must lead authorities to believe that somehow this was partly an inside job. Well, it's, it suggests that that is a possibility, although it certainly doesn't prove it. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is possibly if they had this ramp pass, could someone else have used it to uh, get a knife aboard the plane so that these terrorists could uh, get through the metal detectors without having to carry one of these box cutter knives or these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, apparent knives that they had when they were on the board the aircraft. Who knows whether they were able to carry the knives to the security themselves or whether someone got it to them but that would have by given, bypassing that, security. That would have given them access to areas that a normal person wouldn't have access to. So I guess there are a lot of questions about if they just got that ramp pass and used it themselves or if somehow they were in cahoots with people who worked within the airport. Unclear, I guess, at this right. point. All right, Pete, Pete, thanks very much for the update. We'll talk to you later. Certainly. Okay.